Well, hello, and welcome back to the final day of spooky season. Today, we're gonna to be talking about none other than the spooky, the creepy brain cactus. Okay, I guess it's actually not that creepy looking, but if you are into creepy plants, be sure to go check out my video that I did last week on plants that are absolutely terrifying. But with that said, let's cut to the chase and get into all the juicy details of how to take care of your very own brain cactus. And I promise you, it's pretty easy. So with that said, roll the intro and let's get into it. Okay, so the brain cactus, also known as Mammillaria alongata cristata? Is that pronunciation right? That sounds like some kind of Italian dessert. I'm not sure. Anyway, this plant is native to Mexico, and I always say I personally love plants that are native to Mexico. Since Arizona has a pretty similar climate, it makes caring for these plants really, really easy for me. Now, as you can see, my little guy that I have here is pretty small. He's not too big of a cacti compared to some of the other ones that I have in my collection. However, that's pretty standard for brain cacti. So, you know, you're not going to get a major outcropping of these. Um, in fact, they typically kind of max out around six inches high and 12 inches deep. And I think one of the most interesting things about this plant is actually how it gets its formation in the first place. So there's actually a very similar version of this plant that's often referred to as the lady fingers. Now I actually have one in my collection. I'll put a picture up here. And what's really interesting is that these lady fingers, they tend to just grow out like these long outshoots. However, young in their life, if those cacti get kind of nibbled on by bugs or other animals or creatures that are just hungry, um, or some of them just genetically have a mutation inside of them, they'll actually form these crusts on top. And again, that stems from an early in life having that mutation happen throughout the rest of the cells. So really, really interesting there. And I always think it's just so cool how plants can kind of mutate and change over time. And you can look at those different varieties and see how they're so similar, but also so different at the same time. Now, one of the characteristics that I absolutely love about this plant compared to something like a bunny ear cactus that may look very similar is, as you can see, I can touch this cactus without being in pain. Now, uh, despite having all of these teeny tiny little hairs on it. It actually doesn't put its needles out. They don't have those reverse spikes. So overall, if you have you know kids or pets or something like that, it's really nice that they can kind of rush up to it or touch it or whatever and not get a ton of needles stuck in their hand. But let's get into the basics of the care now. So starting out with lighting. Again, these are native to Mexico and Mexico does tend to have pretty strong sun. Additionally, with these having a heavy covering of needles on them, that does kind of act like a little bit of a sunblock, so you probably could get away putting this guy in full sun. Personally, I keep mine in a bright indirect light out on my patio. However, wherever you do decide to put this guy, you're definitely going to want lighting conditions that are on the brighter side. This brings us in to water. I don't think it's any secret that most cacti and succulents don't like a lot of water, and this guy is no exception to the rules. So you're gonna to wanna to be pretty sparing with it. However, something to keep in mind is with all these folds and crevices on the top of this cacti, it's very susceptible to kind of getting that water stuck in there and rotting out and molding and you know, all the things that we don't really like on this channel. So what you're going to wanna to opt for, instead of kind of watering on the top really sloppily, you're either gonna to wanna to put this in a pot where you can water it around the base without getting the center of the cacti wet, or conversely, what you can do is actually just take your pot, as long as it has drainage holes on the bottom or some kind of hole to let the water in, uh, put it in a pot of water and let that water suck up from the bottom. This is referred to as bottom watering if you're new to it. It's a very, very common method for plants and cacti and succulents to get watered. Personally, it's one of my favorites because it really makes the plant work for the water and only takes up what it needs. Now just be sure if you do go this method and not to leave the plant in the water for too long, otherwise it will get root rot as well, but it can be a really great method, particularly for these plants where you don't want to overwater and have all that nasty like fungus in the top up there. Additionally, same thing goes for humidity here. Now while it can be really tempting to put this guy inside of some spooky little terrarium, one second, let me go grab one. I recently got this bell jar while I was out thrifting and I think it looks so cool and especially for spooky season. But the problem with doing something like this with your cacti and succulent is this terrarium is really, really gonna trap in all that humidity in there and that's not what you want. Same thing, like if you water all over the cacti or succulent, if you have that humidity getting trapped in there, it's just gonna make it more susceptible to that mold and to the rot. So again, as cute as this looks, we have to take it out of here. This is also probably the moment that I should address the fact that like, why is this not in a skull plant? I even have a skull planter. It would be the perfect thing for it. I don't know, I'm kind of just lazy and I don't really like repotting cacti and succulents. However, if you do have to repot a cacti, what I recommend is actually taking the little chopsticks and if you push it into the soil, um, I would recommend like two in this scenario, you can actually just pull it right out. It's super convenient and then you're not getting stabbed. 
But anyway, I digress. If you are going to go with one of those really cool skull planters or pots, just make sure that there is, again, a drainage hole in the bottom. Having really good drainage for any type of cacti or succulent is going to be really, really important. Now, oftentimes in the comment section, you guys will ask, well, how often, how many days in between my watering should I go? And this is something that's really going to depend on your local environment. So here I am in Arizona. It is very hot. It is very dry. It is very sunny. So I tend to water my cacti more often. That looks more in the neighborhood of one to two weeks. However, if you live somewhere that's cooler, colder, maybe perhaps the Northeast, maybe Buffalo, New York, where I happen to be from, then in that case, you're going to want to go way farther. You can probably get away anywhere in the neighborhood of four to six weeks, but again, just take into consideration what your conditions are and the best way to know for sure is to touch the soil and once it's completely, completely, I mean completely dry, that's when you're going to want to go in and give it a really heavy watering. I'm not talking about a little pipette, you know, dripping a few drops on there. No, you're going to want to go in and do a heavy watering. Here in the desert, when it rains, it rains like crazy. So that's really just gonna replicate its natural environment, letting it dry out for prolonged periods of time, and then having a ton of water come in at once makes it feel right at home and is gonna keep it super, super happy. This brings us into the temperature that it likes. Again, like I've said throughout this entire video, it's native to Mexico, so it's not gonna to wanna to get too cold. So you know, if you're buying one of these and leaving it outside for the trick-or-treaters, maybe just like bring it on in if it's a little cold by you. I've seen that anywhere below 30 degrees they don't like, but honestly, just to be safe, I'd say anywhere below Below 50. Finally, this brings us into propagating. Perhaps you have one of these or your friend has one of these and you guys want to share them. Well, the good news is, is that you can definitely divide these plants and what you're going to kind of want to look for is just a good point where you can kind of, you know, get in between those folds and just lob off a piece. Now be sure that whatever you're using to lob off that piece is sterilized, is clean, and isn't going to introduce any bacteria or nastiness to your plant. So additionally, what some people will experience with these plants is they revert back to their ladyfinger state and they may start to put off these long projections. You can additionally propagate those off. In some cases, they will continue to grow as a ladyfinger. In other cases, once you prop them, they'll grow as a new brain cactus. It's really all a big surprise. Additionally, these cacti are very often used for grafting, which I think is such a cool practice. I'm not going to talk about the whole process here in this video because there's a ton of videos that are going to detail it way more in depth than I do. But basically what that means is that you take off a piece of this cactus and you put it on another cactus and then you have some crazy Franken cactus, which of course is totally in theme with the day. Anyway, that is all I have for today, you guys. Thanks so much for sticking around until the end of the video. As always, if you have questions, comments, concerns about your brain cacti, please don't hesitate to drop them in the comment section down below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Don't forget to hit that like button and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more plant videos like this in the future. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Happy Halloween and I hope to see you in the next video.